Hello guys, so we are back for part two of this three-part makeup collection series. Uh, this is the third drawdown, so let's get right into it. So as you can see, I've got a mixture of Too Faced palettes, I've got some Natasha Denona in the corner, I've got a little Wayne Goss here, and I've also got this 5050 brand here, which a lot of you probably do not know about. Um, 5050 is an indie makeup brand, uh, I believe they're based in the Netherlands. Um, I really like their makeup in general. I did have some feedback on the Zephyr palette um, when that was released, and the owner was a little bit weird with me about my feedback. Um, I don't know why, but they came across my channel and yeah, I just said that I'm not a fan of glitters in general. That was basically the feedback that I had and they were a little bit weird with me, unfortunately, but that's the way life goes. But this Zephyr palette is basically a rainbow style palette. It's gorgeous. Okay. But these glitters, um, I would have preferred them to be either mattes or shimmers. I'm just not a fan of glitters in general, and that's not a personal dig at anyone's brand or anyone's makeup. It's just a personal preference of mine. Um, and yeah, just not a fan of the glitters. But this palette is really beautiful. The shades blend really nicely. I got a really nice look out of these. I love using this palette for Pride Month and when I do Pride makeup looks because they just look so fantastic. And yeah, it's just one, it's a great palette to carry. It's not too heavy. It's fantastic. So I don't have to worry about carrying multiple palettes, say like Colourpop, if I was to do a rainbow look. So yeah, I, I like the range of colours here and there's enough here that you can sort of do what you like with it, which is great. Um, but yeah, for me personally, I don't need glitters in a palette. Um, so yeah, that's just a personal opinion. I mean, a lot of you out there will probably disagree with me and that's totally fine as well. But yeah, I really do enjoy this palette overall. It's worth it <laughs> for that. Uh, next set of palettes, these are all like um, themed palettes for each season. So the first one is Summer um, here. Let me just try and slide this out as best I can. There we go. Whoops. There we go. So the Summer palette, I mean, lovely. Love these colours. I think that the mix of colours here is really nice. It's not a completely boring summer style palette. There's definitely some really nice pops of colour here, but there's also some deeper shades and some really nice shimmers here that you can sort of work with and make um, a really nice variety of looks as well. So that's always a really good thing. I don't believe any of these other smaller palettes have glitters in them, thank goodness, from memory. Uh, this one is the Fall palette slash Halloween palette. It is pretty Halloween based, so I may whip this out for a video later. I'm not sure at this stage uh but yeah it is pretty much more on the full side uh there is obviously some black here and some other deeper tones that you could definitely make it more halloween like so yeah there's options and things you can do with it it's basically a really nice neutral palette for the full i would say so popping it back in there Oop. there we go as you can tell, I'm not against ordering from indie brands. I have done that before, but they've got to be good quality. You know what I mean? This is the winter palette. There we go. And there is a typo up here. Um, it's meant to be all things nice. Um, they had a typo error, so I was able to get this palette for half price, I think, which was good. Um, and, I mean, I don't really care that much about a little typo on something. But these shadows are really nice. I mean, you've got some references to Christmas in here as well, which is great. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. But I think, here's the thing. I think a lot of countries forget that the Southern Hemisphere and Australia exists. And we are coming into summer at the moment. So when we see winter colour palettes and things, we just sort of think, oh, gee. And, when, and like right at the moment, we're seeing a lot of fall um color palettes and stuff like that and we're just sort of like we want spring colors because we're in spring at the moment but <laughs> there you go here's the spring palette by the way uh, i think this is my favorite of the lot um of these smaller palettes this is definitely more my speed in terms of colors um love all the shimmers um the mattes are all pretty um easy colors to work with and colors that i enjoy working with i mean you've got a purple and a pink and two fairly light matte shades and then you've got the shimmers it's it's a perfect palette for me so 
um, I like it a lot. Now I did just look back at part one and I did see my face was out of the camera zone for a lot of it, which I don't mind because it means I can focus on the palettes. So if that's bothering you, I'm really sorry, but um, it's actually better that everything is in the frame here than my ugly face. So <laughs> that's, that's better in my opinion. So I've got my larger Too Faced palettes at the back. I've got the original Gingerbread Spice palette. I bought this secondhand. Um, oh, because when these came out in Australia at Mecca, they went fucking bananas. Like you couldn't buy them. They just went absolutely crazy. Um, love the colour story of this. I just think these colours are still quite neutral, but you've got a nice orange colour. You've got some gold, um, some berry tones. You've got this sort of um, olivey colour. I mean, hot pink, another berry tone over here. It's not boring. You know, it's neutral, but it's not boring. And it smells like gingerbreads. So even better. I just love these colour themes. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is what Tarte wishes they are. You know, Too Faced just hits it on the head every time. This is the extra spicy gingerbread palette they bought out the following year. Oh, once again, gorgeous. I mean, you've got this beautiful blue up here. Another sort of orangey tone, but deeper. This is obviously less purple than the year before some more interesting shimmers i mean it's still fairly neutral but once again you've got some interesting pops of color and things so it keeps it interesting lovely once again had to buy this second hand i mean they never have enough stock at mecca for Too faced because everyone loves Too faced um next one is pumpkin spice gorgeous i think this was last year if i remember correctly last year's palette so I think this was 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. I think that's correct. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But here's Pumpkin Spice. Oh, I mean, come on. Look at this. These colours are absolutely amazing. I mean, you've got everything that you could want here in a neutral palette. It's got beautiful pinks and purples. It's got, once again, a few sort of rusty orangey tones you've got some olives and sort of like greeny tones um a little bit of a berryish tone here as well i mean it's great this is actually this is probably my favorite out of all of them because it's so well balanced there's nothing that's specifically like there's no overly neutral tones in here it's like it's it's still a neutral palette but there's lots of different things going on Here's Cinnamon Swirl. This is their most recent palette and it's currently available uh, that I did a review on. So what is, let's have a look. There we go. So once again, I really like this palette. Um, this deeper shimmer was really cool. This shimmer up here is nice. Fairly neutral compared to the other three palettes. Um, not sure if that's just because people are wanting neutral palettes again or if it's just, I don't know, maybe they've run out of ideas. Maybe they just wanted something more neutral this year. But yeah, probably my least favourite out of all those. But still a nice colour story. There's nothing to be sneezed at there. So I've got the Natasha Denona mini palettes. I just keep them in that corner because I don't have many of them. Um, I've done reviews on all of these very recently. So yeah, all my reviews are always in the skincare, hair care and makeup playlist. Or you can search for my channel name with the palette that you're after for review. So here is the mini retro palette, gorgeous tones here. Once again, a neutral palette, but not boring. You've got olivey um, kind of tones here and a nice pink. So that's always good. Got the mini Tropic palette. This is my most recent addition to the collection. I only got this a few weeks ago. This is gorgeous. Uh, love the blues, love the greens, love this lilac tone. I did say in my review I would have preferred if this was maybe a um, either a matte yellow or a shimmery yellow just to add something to the other ones and then you can sort of tone down or ramp up the other colours as well with the yellow. Um, just my opinion on that. But still happy to have the lilac there. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. So, yep, happy days. 
the Mini Love palette. I believe this is still available. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, once again, nice colours. Still wearable, but not boring, which is great. Um, yeah, just love the different colours. Obviously, the purple, bearish tones are great. That sort of neutral shimmer. And then some more sort of champagne -y, rosy colours here as well are great. So that's always good. We've got the Mini Xenon palette, which is the most recent mini palette that Natasha Denona has come out with. This is basically a smoky eye palette. So similar to Smoke Show, Blow and Smoke from Colourpop, but it is a more condensed version of that and obviously a more expensive version of that. I really do like this palette, but I think if you're going for value for money, I would recommend the Colourpop over this. But if you're looking for a really small smoky eye palette, this is a great option for you, but it does not have a mirror, just FYI. So, yeah, it's really up to you and what you are looking for out of a palette. So, yeah, it's up to you. So down here I've got a couple of Colourpop um, pot liners. That's Exit. I don't really use these very much. Our cream gel colours, that's what they're called. And this is called Nut. So they're not liners. Um, you can use them as liners, I believe, but I have used these as sort of like base shades for my eyeshadow or just um, general shades of eyeshadow. They're not bad, but I do have other ones that I prefer. Um, Painterly, uh, MAC Paint Pot in Painterly is a lot better than this for a base. This is more waxy and it's just, I don't know, there's just something not right about it. I don't know. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't melt into the eyelids like you would expect it would. Here is the Too Faced Palm Springs Dreams. It doesn't have a box, so you guessed it. I purchased it secondhand. Um, once again, neutral but not boring. That blue, very similar to the one in Extra Spicy. And that is also pretty similar to the one in Extra Spicy. Um, I'm not sure if this is currently available or not. It was available for quite a while. But if you did miss out on the Gingerbread Extra Spicy palette, this might be a great option for you. It does have a very similar kind of colour story. It's just more condensed and obviously less shades overall. Oh, this is one of my favourite palettes. The I Want Candy palette by Candy Johnston, Johnson for Too Faced. Um, I'm not sure if she's still a Too Faced ambassador or if she's stepped away from the company. But Candy Johnson, if you have been around for a while, especially on YouTube with the influences, the old influences of YouTube, Candy Johnson was one of them, and she was fantastic. Um, and, yeah, this palette just screams Candy Johnson. It's gorgeous. You've got these beautiful base shades here. Uh, once again, neutral but not boring neutral. Um, smells like um, candies. It's gorgeous. Um, it's one of my favourite palettes in my collection, especially just for collection purposes. So, yeah, I really like this palette. So that's that. Oh, these ones. I forgot about these ones in the corner. Okay, so I've got the Peanut Butter and Honey from Too Faced. This is no longer sold. Um, these palettes, this style of palette isn't sold much anymore. They're really interesting. I like that these shades are the lighter shades and you get more of it here. And then the darker shades and the deeper shades are more um, small. It, it's a good concept for a palette, especially if you're someone who uses a lot of lighter shades in your everyday um so i liked that concept of the palette and there is also a lookbook up here three steps three looks three minutes so you can easily follow the little guide as well if you're new to makeup i really liked these sorts of palettes that they used to have way before influences went crazy like this is back in 2015 these palettes from what i'm reading 2015 uh, this is 2017. This is a later one. But the peanut butter and jelly. Once again, neutral but not boring. There is some nice sort of rusty colours here as well. There is that beautiful pop there of purple. It's simple but pleasant and nice. So I like that as well. Um, yeah, so I, ju I just like palettes that are simple and easy for the everyday person to use. Um, I think that's really important. I think brands need to make sure they're still making those sorts of palettes for people. Okay, so Wayne Goss, that's all I've got left here. I'm just going to start over here really quickly. Waterproof Mascara in Black. I have done a review on this, so I won't open it up. 
Uh, so the this palette here, let's start here. This is the Radiance Boosting Face Palette. It's a bronzing and sculpting face palette. This is in light gold. They do have a medium and a deep version of this. And when he says light gold, he means light gold. This is a perfect palette for anyone who is really, really light skin toned. It's not too orange on the skin. It blends beautifully, especially if you're looking for a more natural look and you want a natural sort of um, bronzing and cool toned, uh, what do you call it, contour shade. If you want that, this is a great palette and I would highly recommend it. I haven't found any other palette on the market that is this light um, and blends this well for a very, very, very pale skin tone. I mean, even if you're lighter than me, I would recommend it. It's probably the shade that you're going to fall in love with. So I've got some Weightless Veil Blush Palettes here. Uh, let's have a look at this one. They should probably, I probably should pop these on the bottom. That's okay. This one is Coral Rose. Love the blush in this. I was I was okay with the highlighter shade. It was it was okay. I do love the blush the blush though, so that's worth it for that. Underneath, I've got another weightless veil blush palette, and this one is called Bright Poppy. Love the blush in this. The highlighter was way too dark for me. I had to layer it on top of the blush. Um, you can use these palettes in that way. They are meant to be used either you can top the blush with this shade or you can wear this separately as a highlighter and this is a blush. It's up to you. But yeah, this is definitely more for a deeper skin tone. And yeah, this highlighter was far too dark for me. So it was a no-no for me. Another Weightless Veil Blush Palette. This one is called Blush Peony. As you can tell, I do try and keep things in boxes in general. It just protects the products, especially if I drop them on the ground um, and just keeps them looking fresh. This is one of my favourites. Um, the blush shade's really nice and the highlighter has a really nice sort of pinky reflect to it. Really flattering and pretty for me, at least. So, yeah, loved that. Cool. Another one here. This one is called Vivid Azalea. This was gorgeous as well. Oh, stunning. This is one of my favorites as well. Not a huge fan of the highlighter just because it has a gold reflect, which is not my biggest. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of that, but this blush, whoo! I mean, even on a deep skin tone, that would do it. It's gorgeous. Beautiful purpley pink blush. I just loved it. I thought it was stunning. So let's pop you back in there. So I have left a little space for the new luxury eye palette called Tourmaline. Uh, that will be coming in the mail very soon. And I will have a review on that very soon for you. When, once it does come to me, which it will take a while because it's from Beautylish. Luxury eye palette. This one is called Imperial Topaz. This is the original eye palette, the first one he came out with. Come on. I don't know why. My nails are just... I think I had a bit of trouble opening this palette the first time I used it too. I've got good nails, so I don't know why. There we go, got it. So, yeah, pretty basic neutral palette. I mean, you've got a nice rusty tone here. I love the black in this. It's extremely pigmented. Um, so great for liner, great for anything that you want to do, which was a great experience when I was reviewing this product. This one here is called Pearl Moonstone. This is the second palette he released. Gorgeous. Don't understand the repeat shade with the black. I, I think that was a missed opportunity. It could have been a really nice vibrant uh, matte blue or just something different. But yeah, once again, nice shadows, blended well. What more could you ask for? So yeah, really happy with that palette. Definitely a different um, sort of 
uh, palette, I guess, than what is normally marketed. So yeah, it was pretty interesting in that respect. And then I've got the Pearl palette here, which was his most recent palette before Tourmaline, his third eyeshadow palette. This was what this was my favorite color scheme because it is sort of a lighter neutral palette and it's got the nice pink there as well. Definitely more my speed. Um, but the tourmaline that's coming is probably going to take over as my favorite Wayne Goss palette because the color story is stunning. It's definitely more berryish, um, which is definitely more my speed. So, yeah, we'll see how we go with that. Okay, one drawer down. Next drawer. These are face products. This is my face products drawer. So I've pretty much done most of my eyeshadows. I think that's pretty much all of them now. Um, obviously, I will do a separate matte cosmetics video. I've already told you guys that. Uh, but yeah, this is my face products drawer. There's another one underneath as well. But yeah, this is where most of my face products are. Oh, just going to itch the, back, the top of my butt near where my, uh, what do you call it? near where my back and my butt meet <laughs> so i've got the anasui brightening powder here i just did a review on this um really nice brightening powder may leave a white cast if you um are not as light as me just use it with a lot of caution um but it is a really nice powder i will say that um and yeah it's got a nice light rose scent to it like a fresh rose scent which is gorgeous Next one down is the Mulan and Colourpop Press Powder Blush. This one is called, it's called something. It is called Matchmaker. So gorgeous design. I mainly bought this because it was on sale and I needed to get free shipping. <laughs> it was cheaper for me to buy a blush and get free shipping um, than to not buy one and pay for shipping. So um, that's what I did. Um, yeah, so... That's why I've got this blush. I mean, it's not really my tone. It's got gold bits in it. It's more for collection purposes. I haven't touched it. As you can see, I I love anything Mulan. So, and I love that sort of thing. So I just thought I would buy it. Colourpop, once again, pressed powder bronzer. This is from the Going Coconuts collection. It's called Talk to the Palm. Talk to the Palm. And this is just a really nice medium uh bronzer it does have a little bit of shimmer in it but not much at all it's a fairly matte bronzer so i would recommend it if you like that sort of thing okay next to it i've got um, a milk makeup uh, this is the holographic highlighting powder i don't know what shade this is in oh mars that's the shade mars uh love this shade actually it looks quite sort of goldeny in the pan but it is actually quite peachy rosy once you whip it out and get it going on your skin i really like it it's it's a fun one it's a really fun one very similar to the kaleidos um highlighter i think it's called mars melter or something i will show you that later in the video well part three it won't be in this video but there's that Next one down is the Urban Decay and Jean-Michel Basquiat. I think that's how you pronounce it. This is a blush palette, the Gallery Blush Palette. He is a famous artist. He does some pretty wild um, drawings and stuff and paintings. So those are the colours there. Love the colour story here. I mean, there's something here for everyone. There's a nice pinky tone blush. You've got this sort of highlighting shade that's pretty universal it doesn't look overly gold i mean it, it's not too bad you've got this beautiful berry bronze um not berry bronzer berry blush and a medium tone bronzer so it's a pretty nice face palette i bought this second hand because i wasn't into makeup back when this was released uh this was released when was this released um doesn't say Hmm. doesn't say oh well doesn't matter but it is gorgeous this next one is probably one of my favorite bronzers in my entire collection this is the Too Faced Natural Lust bronzer the packaging on this is absolutely insane you cannot buy this anymore you do have to buy this secondhand 
I mean, hello. Love it. Oh, I mean, are you serious? Like... Gorgeous. I don't even want to touch this bronzer. That's how much I love the design and everything of it. I just think it's a fucking work of art. I think it's fantastic. Um, smells like coconuts. I mean, what more could you want? And this was actually influenced by Paulina Beauty back when I used to watch her all the time. So, um, yeah, very special blush in my collection and something that I really enjoy. So, yeah, it's just... See, as you can see, I don't buy everything just to use. A lot of it is collection purposes, and I see no shame in that whatsoever. Like this one down here. This is another Shu Amura and Super Mario Brothers. This is the Lock Booster Protective Moisture Primer, um, SPF 50. It's got the squid on it. The squid, I think it's called a squid, isn't it, from Super Mario Brothers. That's the only game I really liked as a kid, except for Crush Bandicoot, because all the other games were too freaking hard for me, really. So it's just a special thing for me. I've got the Juicy Couture Bling Queen Highlighter. This is a liquid highlighter in called, it's called Give It a Glow. Comes in a bottle like this. It's a 30ml of product. Juicy Couture makeup, quite expensive. Um, but, I mean, I'm a Juicy Couture whore. So it doesn't matter to me what the price is. It's just something I like. Next one is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. I have done a review on this on the channel. Um, just a, a typical kind of silicone-y kind of primer, but it doesn't feel too heavy on the skin either, which is great. So there you go. There you go. But it's not oh, sugar. It's not overly moisturizing or anything, even though it says hydro on it. So don't even think about it if you're like really have really dry skin and you think it's going to be moisturizing. It's not. Next one is the Toucher Liquid Silk Canvas. I was a huge fan of the original Silk Canvas. I love this product as well. I think this is a better, lighter weight version of the product, but the original Silk Canvas is great as well. So yeah, and I have the original one in my makeup bag. I will show you that at the end of part three. Uh, next one is a spare of my RCMA um, Research Council of Makeup Artists KA Series Favourites palette. And this is a cream blush palette. So, yeah, it's got all the nice shades. I'm sort of around a two to three in this palette um, in terms of a shade. I do tend to mix the darker colours with the lighter colour, you know, whatever goes, really. I've got other cream shadows that are quite light as well that I mix things with, so... I just make it work, you know what I mean? Okay, back before Jeffrey got into more drama than he knew what to deal with, I got quite a few of his magic concealers. I've got the CO shade, which is the really white shade. I've got the C1, which is like the next shade up. I've got the C2, next shade up again. And the green shade for uh, redness. Now, Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was Maybelline that used to sell, I don't know if they still sell it, they sell like a green lipstick kind of thing that used to cover up redness on the face. Oh my god, that was a lifesaver when I was growing up. <laughs> that was an amazing thing, being a teenager and having something like that. Okay, I'm going to go, hmm, okay, this is a little bit difficult because there's just stuff everywhere. Okay, I'm going to go up here anyway. So this is the Milk Makeup Holographic Face Gloss. Um... It looks like it's in a red shade. It's actually in this bluey kind of shade. Um, oh, no, it's not. This is something different. Okay, I'm just going to pop a little bit on my finger or the back of my hand. Holographic face gloss. There's no other words for it. Oh, okay. Woo! Oh, my goodness. Okay, so that's like a pinky purpley liquid highlighter. Oh, work. Okay. Sick. Oh, that's pretty. I didn't even realise that that was... I thought this was the br the blue thing that I bought. There was a blue thing I bought, but it's not. Okay, that's great. I'm just going to get a makeup wipe because I don't want that to distract you throughout the video. Um, and just quickly wipe that off. Oh, okay, cool. Fantastic. I think I'm going to be doing that a little bit more throughout the video anyway, so we'll just leave that there. I've got the Laura Mercier Powder Puff, which came with the limited edition translucent loose setting powder this was the um chinese new year version that they released earlier this year just it's the same product but it's different so funny on my review for this i had so many people like 
this isn't the original translucent powder. I'm like, yes, it is. It's in limited edition packaging. I did explain that in the video. I mean, it, people make it so obvious when they don't watch my videos in full when they say things like that. But anyway, not to worry. Um, Vagisil Pro Hydrate Cream. If you've seen one of my recent videos, you'll know what this is all about. Basically, Vagisil is apparently an old drag queen trick um, if you're out of primer and you need to buy one really quickly. Back when they didn't sort of have Sephora and makeup shops and stuff like that, this was basically what they used to do. They used to go and buy this um, and use it on their face. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but it definitely wasn't the best primer I've ever used. I'm basically just keeping it in here um, for another video or something like that, you know. So that's all it is. That's why it's right at the back, because I don't really think I'm going to use it regularly. I've got the Gucci Cushion Debuté Power... Um, I was about to say powder foundation. It's the um, cushion foundation. That's the one. And yeah, I did a review on this recently. This is still a fairly new product. I absolutely loved it. Um, and it's got the cushion under there. I did replace the seal. I always replace the seal on my cushion foundations because it keeps the product fresher for longer. Um, so yeah, just a tip. If you do buy a cushion foundation, try and reapply the seal over the top after you use it if you can if you remember to another gucci product up here i've got the powder debuté this is the powder foundation comes in a little like velvety sachet gorgeous packaging this lifts out as well and you've got the powder puff underneath gorgeous stunning can take a little moment to put these back in the pouch. Oh, it's like a little snug bear in a rug. There we go. Very cute. Pop you back in. There we go. Uh, let's work down. Okay, so I've got the Drunk Elephant O Blues Rosy Drops. I'm not going to take them out of the package because the package is pretty similar to the outer part. Uh, liquid blush, uh, really nice colour, doesn't need a lot to work, it's beautiful. Um, Drunk Elephant De Bronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine Drops, don't know about the anti-pollution part, but basically bronzing drops, these are quite good. I think that if you had even a medium skin tone, these would work really well. Deep skin tone, you probably have to work it up a little bit, but still a really nice product. I've got the Essence Fresh and Fit Awake Primer. I don't think they sell this anymore from memory. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, really nice cheap primer if you're looking for one. Um, sort of like that sort of silicone style primer. So if you're looking for one, uh, this is a great one. I've got the Pretty Fresh Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Primer. Once again, not a bad primer for the price. The All Star Matte and Blur Primer. Not sure if they still sell this or not. Um, also a really nice cheap primer if you're looking for one. The Touch of Silk Powder. I recently did a review on this. Not a bad powder as well. There's definitely cheaper options out there, but it was a nice product. The Shock of the Century. I really enjoyed these ones here. The Monica Blunder Beauty Blunder Cover. A two-in-one foundation and concealer product. Um, gorgeous gorgeous color i bought the eins which is the number one color and zwei which is number two and yeah just gorgeous um gorgeous formula to work with pretty much replaced my rcma um cream foundation i will use up my rcma first but these two have basically replaced it for me honestly because they're the best that i've tried um let me start over here because we're going to go down again so right at the top, Gucci once again, this is the Natural Finish Fluid Foundation. It's a liquid foundation. It's very rare that I actually enjoy a liquid foundation. I really enjoyed this one. The texture of it's fantastic. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. The coverage is absolutely fantastic for the amount of product that you use. It's very pigmented, so I recommend it. If you are not a fan of cream foundations, which... Basically, the reason why I use cream foundations is because they're very light, but they give you the pigment as well. So, look, it's up to you guys, whatever you prefer. I've got the Gucci uh, Serum Debuté. This is a silk priming serum, so basically a serum. Very nice feel on the skin. Once again, quite lightweight, but still gives you a really good result, which is always lovely. And glass bottle, 
classic, classy. Love it. Next one along is the bronzer. This is the Poudre de Beauté Eclat Solar bronzing powder. Very similar style of packaging to the uh, foundation powder. Gorgeous bronzing colour. Nice little brush if you want it, but I mean, most of us have a really nice bronzing powder in our, I mean, a bronzing brush, powder brush, you know, in our collection. So I wouldn't recommend using such a flimsy brush unless you're doing contour stuff. Um, such a little short brush like that. But I do like that they've included something in there, you know. Uh, this one is the Love Cheek Duo from Natasha Denona. We are sort of getting into the T Natasha Denona area now of the thing. Lovely packaging. I love this sort of, I love these sort of cute little details with the um, things that do that. Uh, highlighter, wasn't a huge fan of it, but the cream blush was fucking stunning. I loved it. Corally, pinky, perfect shade for me. I just loved it. I love corally pinky blushes the most. They're my favourite. So that was a beautiful one to try out. But yeah, the highlighter, not a huge fan of, to be honest. RMS Beauty Uncover Up uh, Concealer. This is in triple zero. This is very, very light. But it worked beautifully on my skin. Really loved it as a concealer. Even as an all-over product would be great. But the price for it is pretty steep considering Monica Blunder is around the same price, if not less, and you get tons more products. So, um, yeah, I would recommend the Monica Blunder over RMS just for price, but if you have better access to RMS Beauty, you can always buy RMS Beauty. So there you go. Natasha Denona Blush. Two different shades there. The gold shade, definitely not for me, but the bronzer, really nice. I bought this secondhand pretty cheaply. As you can see, there's no um, container or um, box with it, so there you go. Uh, Natasha Denona Glow Sticks, they were putting these on half price. The Face Glow Cream Shimmers. This one's the deep one, I think. Face Glow, oh no, this is the light one, number one light. So there you go. I haven't really used these. I mean, I probably shouldn't have bought them in hindsight because, I mean, I didn't really need them. And this one is number two medium, but this looks lighter than the light one. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> uh, this is more of a goldy color, so probably not going to be the ideal shade for me, but that's okay. Just turn it round. Easy. Okay. Uh, the contour sculpting powder, Natasha Denona. This is in 04 dark. So this is pretty dark. I think I think I bought this on sale as well. I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest, because it's really dark. Oh, very dark um, for me, at least. But I mean, if you buy a bronzer or something that's too dark for you, go in with a really, really light hand and it'll eventually work. Blend it like hell and it'll eventually work. So, yeah, not sure why I bought it, but there we go. Natasha Denona to me is like a moth to a flame. I can't help myself. This is the Glow Gold, as you can see. Bought it secondhand. There's no outer packaging. I mean, girl, this is not for me. <laughs> as you can tell, it's very bronzy and glowy. Definitely not for me. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's nice. It's probably more of an eyeshadow palette rather than a face palette, to be honest with you. Next one is Super Glow. This is Extreme Shine Crystal Highlighting Powder in bronze. Okay, there we go. I can't remember what this looks like, so we'll find out together. Oh, no. <laughs> Another one I probably shouldn't have bought. It's way too gold for me. Way too gold. Should use it on my eyes and nothing more. And then the bottom one is just called Glow. I think this is a fairly neutral colour from memory. Bought this secondhand as well. All over Glow Face Body in Shimmer Powder in 01 Light. Oh, okay, that's okay. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, it's a pretty neutral colour, to be honest, but it does have sort of like a silvery, pinky kind of shimmer to it. It's not a bad colour. I would use it. 
Okay, and then I've got these two up in the corner and then we're done for part two. I've got the Love Glow Cheek Palette, the Bloom Palette. Once again, great packaging. Love these little details like that. Gorgeous range of shades. Not a fan of this highlighter. Not a fan of the glittery topper, but these two shades were brilliant. Loved the cream blush and the sort of creamy highlighter shade. They were really nice. This is the Bloom Blush and Glow palette. And once again, these two sh shades were really nice. Not so much a fan of this one. This one was pretty good as well. This peachy shade was pretty nice as well. Okay, so there we go. That is part two done. I hope you liked this um, second part. I hope you've been enjoying the series so far. Let me know if you've tried any of the products that I've mentioned or you own any of them. Let me know what your experience is. I love to hear from all different people and all different skin tones and types. So let me know that as well down below. I'd love to know your experiences. Uh, but yeah, please stay tuned for part three. It's going to be lots of fun. But until then, take care and yeah, stay safe. I hope to see you then. Bye for now.